monetization is the most worrying part about games now because all it takes is an awful monetization system to ruin a game that at its core would be really amazing. And unfortunately, we've seen way too many games fail all because pay-to-win mechanics have been shoved into games. In Gran Turismo 7, a game that a lot of people were really excited for is facing a massive boycott and ratings plummet because, of course, the people behind the game got way too greedy. I have a few things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or supporting the channel via YouTube memberships. All of the links are in the description and of course I do really appreciate all of the support. So before we read the reviews, I wanted to show off this Forbes article. It says Gran Turismo 7's microtransactions are totally out of control, and I was initially going to purchase this game. I had actually pre-ordered it. I was excited for it. And then I read some of the reviews because I was really wondering if this game was going to be good as we all thought it was going to be, and then I canceled my pre-order just a couple of days before launch because of how terrible the microtransaction system sounded. So, it says you might think paying $70 for a video game would be enough, but you'd be wrong. And I've talked a lot of times on the channel about my thoughts on video games being $70 and microtransactions and DLC. I personally think the best model is having a game that's maybe $60 and then having games release maybe two to three DLCs that are like $20 each, but they have a lot of content, like a Witcher model. Unfortunately, they don't really do that for games anymore. It's like $70, and sometimes they'll release DLC that you have to pay for, but all of them have big cash shops. But it says, while I have no problem with actual DLC or even some cosmetic items in premium pay-to-play video games item shops, there comes a point when we must say enough is enough. Gran Turismo 7 appears to be one of those instances, and if they just had maybe some cooler uh, skins or wraps for these cars in the cash shop, just cosmetic items, I wouldn't be too bothered by it because all games sell cosmetics at this point. I don't have a big problem with cosmetics. Cosmetics, but when you start having to force players to purchase items that actually change gameplay, that is what I do not agree with. That is something that makes me not want to support a game. In Gran Turismo Sport, you could purchase vehicles with real money rather than credits, with cars ranging from $0.99 cents to $4.99, and I guess those prices aren't that bad, but still, I do not support games that actually have items in a cash shop that affect gameplay, but it says now prices have gone up, and in order to make a purchase, you need to buy credits, but credits don't necessarily come in the right size package. Another problem that I have with video games games is when, let's say, there's a item in a cash shop for $20, but you can't buy just the $20. You have to buy like $25 or $30 worth of in-game credits. It says a large number of high-spec cars also cost a million credits, but there's no option to buy a million credits from the PlayStation Store. As such, players running low on credits looking to buy a million credit car will have to buy $750,000 and $250,000 for a total cost of $15 or $2 million for $20. Another way they get you to spend money and then you have those credits that kind of sit there. They're odd amounts so you can't actually buy other items in the cash shop. It's just a very scummy model overall and people are furious over this, rightfully so. Right now over on Metacritic, the game is getting review bombed. It's got a 1.5 user score with over 8 thousand ratings. There's 982 positive, 171 mixed, and 7,345 negatives. 
I'm so disappointed that this game came out and it's such a massive failure just because of the monetization system. Because again, the gameplay at first from what we saw looked pretty good and then the game came out and for some reason it did not look good. I haven't played it myself because I did end up canceling my pre-order and I got my money back for it. But it just looked so underwhelming once it came out and with bad monetization systems i mean it's like negative after negative after negative here uh, but there are tons and tons of zeros lots of people saying they refuse to buy the game now they refuse to support this title the ratings are plummeting they're facing a boycott from players i mean this situation got pretty bad pretty quickly there's a lot of people saying things like egregious extended maintenance, revise offline play to include much more than a fixed car roster. It's a very poor choice for the customer. Absolutely gutted about the state of the game lately. This is the most I've ever wanted a refund on a game. Now, yes, this title has only been out for a week and it does face some massive problems and maybe they can turn it around. Maybe they can change the cash shop and it'll bring players in. But right now, it's sitting at a worse score than than Battlefield 2042 because Battlefield is sitting at a 2.1 user score. That says a lot. Somebody said predatory microtransactions are predatory. Patch 1.07 is a spit in the face for all longtime Gran Turismo fans. Stiff middle finger right back at you, Sony. Uh, where's Xbox and Forza? That's what I've been saying this whole time. I was really excited for Gran Turismo 7 because it is a little bit different, but I feel like I'd rather go back to Forza, a game I already own, a game that's on Xbox Game Pass. I'd just rather stick with that than spend $70 on this trash. GT7 is an amazing racing game with a terrible economy. The actual gameplay is very fun. Love driving cars on the track in this game. What is not fun is how incredibly bad race payouts for online and custom events are. Race for 25 minutes with tough AI starting at the back of a 20 car grid. 25k base credit reward for first. This was especially egregious with the new patch payouts where the payouts get worse. This predatory monetization system is reminiscent of other failed games like Battlefront 2 where it was absolutely trashed over pay to win mechanics and EA had to go back and change it all multiple times to at least make the game playable. While yes you can grind out credits in this game, the number of races you'd need to complete to grind out these cars is so massive you'd be playing hundreds of hours just for one car which is similar to a freemium game but at least with those you don't have to pay the initial price for the game and this title is $70. Someone gave it a two, painfully behind the times, a clear cash grab at every turn. This is what it feels like to be robbed blind, simply not up to par, given hype and dev time, cars woefully out of date. It is a shame that this game came out and it's really disappointing for fans. I obviously hope they change the monetization system, they try to fix it. Maybe people can end up enjoying this in a couple of months, but it seems at this point like it was a giant cash grab and like they're probably not going to change the monetization systems. And unfortunately, Gran Turismo 7 is dead on arrival. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.